Hey everybody, this is a quick review of macromolecules. I wanted to do a quick run through of some of the key points you may want to know for any upcoming assessments on macromolecules. So what is a macromolecule? A macromolecule is something that is built by joining together smaller molecules. And so those smaller molecules are referred to as monomers, small units that we put together and then they are put together to make a polymer. Uh, mono meaning one or single, that would be just a single unit. A polymer is a large compound formed by combining many monomers together. And so as you can see in our little diagram in the bottom, a monomer would be one subunit, whereas a polymer will be many. So when we come to talking about macromolecules, we basically break them down into four categories. Carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. And so we'll talk about each of these individually uh, with regards to the elements that are used to make them up, what their monomer is and how those monomers piece together to make the polymer, um, what sort of functions we'd find, and then some examples in nature that we see. So when we're talking about carbohydrates, we're talking about uh, the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen coming together to make up a carbohydrate. Specifically, it's going to have one carbon for every two hydrogens for every one oxygen. That's why the name carbo hydrate one carbon for every one water or one H2O. The monomers that we use for this are monosaccharides and monosaccharides could be things like glucose or um, other simple single sugars. So here's an example of a monomer, a single glucose molecule, put together into a polymer of cellulose shown on the top. On the bottom, we can also see that the monomers of glucose can be put together into the polymer of starch. Now, what kind of functions do we have for carbohydrates? Generally speaking, they are used for energy, short-term energy, or for structural components. So for energy, we're looking at things like glucose, uh, simple sugars that are used to be broken down and to make energy. And in case of structure, we're looking at something like cellulose, which provides uh, cell wall structure within plants. The next grouping that we're going to look at are lipids, and lipids have the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And you'll notice that I've put the oxygen as a much smaller font, and the reason for that is because it's predominantly more carbons and hydrogens and only a little bit of oxygens. Now, unlike everything else up here, lipids are not true polymers. They have two subunits, glycerols and fatty acids, that come together to make up all lipids. However, they don't actually build long chains. And so what we'll see is that we have a glycerol backbone and then we have uh, fatty acid side chains that come off of these. And these will then interact in ways where they'll have um, multiple lipids will come together and form a structure, but they don't actually build long chains of fatty acids or long chains of glycerols into a structure. So technically they've got subunits, but they don't make a true polymer. Now, what do we use lipids for? Well, we use them for all biological membranes. So all of the cell membranes in an organism will uh, be made up of a type of lipid. We also use them for long-term energy storage. Uh, waterproof coatings are also made of lipids. And then um, specific types of hormones. And so the biological membranes are, are usually a type of lipid called phospholipids. Um, fats are a good long-term energy. Uh, waxes, like the coating of a leaf, would be a good waterproof coating. And then steroid hormones are a specific type of hormone that our body uses. Uh, things like testosterone are actually made up of lipids. Now, when we come to proteins, uh, we're looking at the elements C, H, and O again. But we'll also find nitrogens and sulfurs in proteins. Now, proteins are made up of amino acids, and there are 20 different amino acids in nature. All of those amino acids have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, and a few of them, and specifically two of them, um, have sulfur, which is why proteins can have sulfur. Now, when we look at this, you'll notice that there are 20 amino acids that occur in nature, and here there are abbreviations and names. And what you'll see is that a chain of amino acids comes together to make up a polypeptide chain. When that polypeptide chain folds up, it actually will form a protein. Now, proteins have very diverse functions. They involve structural elements, hormones, defense, storage, contraction, enzymes, transports, and then many types of receptors. So, for example, keratin, which makes up hair or fingernails, is a structural protein. 
Insulin is a good example of a peptide hormone. Antibodies, which help our immune system function in defense. Ferritin, which actually will hold on to iron. Uh, our body needs iron in order to make hemoglobin, which carries oxygen by blood cells. Ferritin will hold on to that iron until we are ready to make the actual hemoglobin structure. Actin and myosin, which are involved in contraction of muscles. Enzymes like lactase, which help break down lactose into simpler sugars. Uh, specific ion channels, which allow transports of potassiums or sodiums into or out of cells. And then uh, insulin receptor proteins. Insulin is a peptide hormone, but it can't actually enter our cells, so it needs a receptor on the outside of cells to actually bind to that cell and trigger a message within that cell. Our fourth type of macromolecule we'll look at are nucleic acids. Now, nucleic acids, again, have that carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, those three most common elements. They also have nitrogen, and they also have phosphorus. Nucleotides are our monomers uh, that come together and make up nucleic acids, and they are composed of a phosphate, a five-carbon sugar, and a nitrogenous base, and there are actually five different types of nitrogenous base that are found. So the big types that we'll see here are uh, deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA, and ribonucleic acid. And in these cases, you'll see that the rungs of the ladder of the DNA, or the chains that stick out of the RNA, are the nitrogenous bases that really give the identity to these nucleic acids. What do nucleic acids do? Well, they store, transmit, and decode genetic information. And again, the two types that we find are DNA and RNA. So I hope that gives you a quick review of the four major macromolecules, their elements, their monomers, how those monomers come together to make polymers, the functions, and some examples in nature. And I hope that helped demystify the major macromolecules and their components.